Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Some Spoiled, a song of ice and fire to the co host, So Witcheroo. The re reading Return to West Rose, HBO spoiler edition, uncut, uncensored, and too hot for TV. We are covering chapters 46 and 47, Samwell and Arya. In these chapters, each of them is on a journey they really wish they weren't. Mm -hmm. And they are with someone that they have varying levels of concern about in very different ways. It's all... Ever, it just ever, nobody is where they want to be in these books ever. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Unspoiled. Monsters are dangerous, and just now kings are. Dying like flies. I am the king. Fuck the king. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. That's so, really funny that you said that because that might really struck me, these two chapters, even though it's been going on for quite some time. How much fucking traveling is happening in these books? Yep. <laughs> like, everybody is on the road. <laughs> everybody is on the road and, and sometimes in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And it's just really, he really hammers home how much traveling fucking sucks. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I, like, I guess, you know, there was a lot of travel on the show as well, mm -hmm. you know? But... But remember, like, the, the fucking joke about how quickly people were getting from point A yeah. to point B. Uh, and I get it. <laughs> because, you know, at some point, you're just like, can we just fucking be where we're supposed to be already? God damn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like this, this endless tale of traversing through, quite frankly, very unpleasant weather, by the way. Oh, yeah. Both real, of these, these two chapters, especially between fucking the cold with Sam and the rain that won't stop with Arya, I was just, <laughs> I mean, I'm cozy on my sofa in a really nice, big, fluffy bathrobe. And by the end of these two chapters, I felt like, God, I'm tired and right? my body hurts and there's a little bit of a chill in the air. <laughs> <laughs> And I had and are those <laughs> fingers wrapping around my neck? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> but yeah, I understand. Like it was funny because the last uh, episode that we recorded on, where it was Arya with the uh, Brotherhood, and they're like trying to find, they're camping out in like an old barn, and it's pouring rain. That night, I was listening to the chapter while I was cleaning our carport out because there was about to be p possible hail. So Owen wanted to actually pull the car in because, you know, at, in the tradition of most Southerners, we do not use our carport for our car <laughs> most of the time. So every time it needs to be there, we're like, Ugh, fine. And it was pouring rain and it had flooded the carport. So I had to put my my boots on, my galoshes. and. Uh, was like clearing stuff and and you know that thing that happens when something's flooded and you move a big piece of furniture and it causes that wave that goes up and slaps against a wall and then rebounds toward you and now you're like oh it's about to come <laughs> over the top of my galoshes <laughs> and i was soaked and then in the story they were talking about how they were like super soaked and it was going through their like you know the hoods that they had on the, their cloaks and everything and meanwhile my actual hoodie was like starting to sag down my back because <laughs> it was so heavy because it was wet and i was just like man i really get it guys i really get it but it is a uh testament to his writing that you feel it so much you know and in this chapter with samwell this is my sympathize so bad he is reaching this village and desperately hoping that it's this particular village oh he is trying to talk that shit into existence he's trying to manifest that yeah. shit like he's a fucking secret <laughs> 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 and yeah. eventually he has to face the reality that 
you know, this is this is not the same place. Yeah. Because he's like, oh, it's got a white tree in it. It must be white tree. And then the other voice is like, no, Sam, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be white tree. <laughs> yeah. And then it's got a face. And he's like, is that the same face? And the tree doesn't look like it's the same size. But he's just so desperate for it to be this one village. Because then he'll have a sense of where they are in relation to how far they are from uh, Castle Black. Mm-hmm. You know, because he has no idea really where they are. And it was really with a, uh, it's a thing too. I was thinking about uh, navigating really at any point in history, even like now, if you don't have GPS or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Like the idea that figuring out how to get from where you are to where you want to be and knowing that you're going the right way. Right. It is, I am not a nature person, so I don't, I know people could be like, oh, well, you can just go hiking and get that experience. I'm sure you could. I'm not gonna, though. Mm-hmm. Um, Agreed. But, so, you know, for me, everywhere I am, there's gonna be a sign telling me where I am. And if I know where I'm going, then boom, that's the, it done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, like, they're just out here wandering in the woods you know yep. poor sam is wandering in the forest in the in the you know in the fucking frozen tundra of it all and you are just literally hoping for the fucking best you know yeah. you're like trying to go by the stars but it's all dark and shit there's not always a moon you can't always see that shit like you're just out here hoping yep that i've been dreams you know and so yeah. when, when he talks about well, we had to walk around the lake, which is another fucking thing. Every time yeah. a body of water shows up, you can't just fucking cross it. Like, how spoiled are we anymore, you know? <laughs> but, like, there was a time when water would show up and you'd be like, well, got to readjust. Gotta yeah. readjust. Yeah. I guess that adds six <laughs> days to our otherwise three-day trek. Right. Cool. And he's just like, well, maybe we went too far east or maybe we went too far west when we were trying to, like, walk around the lake. And, like, the that your whole fucking journey could be thrown that far off course by something that is so completely out of your control. And you are just (laughs) hoping that somehow you make it back to your course that you're supposed to be on. It's just like, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. The, (laughs) The one time that I remember being truly lost was years ago. And I, we, it was before having like GPS on your phone and I was also running out of gas and it was a really rural area and I had been drinking and there were no signs. I couldn't figure out where I was. It was a really residential rural mm. area, tons of trees. And it was also like 15 degrees outside and everything was icy. Yeah, this and all sounds terrible. I started to panic because I was like, I'm going to run out of gas before I even figure out where the fuck the, the highway is. And I started to pick up speed and then I crashed. Oh, no. Because I was just so kind of like desperate to find anywhere familiar. And I was doing the same thing that he's doing where I'd see a house and I'd be like, wait, is that the house? We passed a house on the way out here that was like, is this it? Then I, then it should be on my left, I think, if I want to get back to, you know, and then be like, I don't think I don't think that's <laughs> the same house. Like, and yeah, I wound up totaling that car and it was oh, a real no. bad night. Mm hmm. Um, um, I think the very last time I can remember being lost, uh, which is really surprising because you would like the, the trip I did going across country, uh, we didn't have any problems. It's, it's, you know, you, we probably should have had a lot of problems like getting lost and stuff, but we didn't have any whatsoever. Nice. It's, it's remarkable. But uh, in like 2000, 2001, we were living in Charlotte and we went with, uh, we wanted to go to Cary, North Carolina which is like right outside of like the Raleigh area, the okay. Raleigh dorm era. And uh, so it was uh, me and Steve, a girl he worked with and her boyfriend at the time. And we we're going to drive up there. We went to a show and we, I remember I printed the directions from MapQuest at my job. Cause that's, it was 2001 <laughs> and that's what you did back then. That's it. <laughs> Um, and then you held those fucking printed directions up and turned the dome light on in the car and squinted while you drove and it was very safe. So everything was like going exactly the way it was supposed to go, but we were traveling on Halloween and we hit a DUI checkpoint. Oh no. Which was fine. We were all sober, but 
it fucked up the directions because it caused a detour and they made us turn gotcha. off of the road that our directions were for and took us off this main road into like an area that sounds like you're describing like like still residential but but just barely mm-hmm, the, the mm-hmm. more rural than residential really you know what i mean and we go down this long road and it's dark as fuck and there's nothing and we go forever we're just like this is this is you know steve we were and we, we were new to well, i was new to the south i had lived in the south a bunch but steve had never been in the south before he's getting more and more like hearing the banjo from deliverance playing in the background is <laughs> you know yeah. we, we recede deeper and deeper into like this fucking who knows what and then there's this gas station <laughs> oh no and we're oh, like, oh, those can be real. <laughs> this can be scarier than being lost. So we're, so I would like to be lost again, please. <laughs> so we're like, all right, we gotta, we gotta go in there and try to like figure out where the fuck we are and how to get back to where we need to be. And we pull into the gas station, and there's like twelve other cars that were all lost and fucked up from the oh, same detour. <laughs> bless them. Everybody was so in it together. We, I so love it. We got there and it's like, and, and uh, they weren't all going to the place we were going, but like, I think like four or five of those cars were all going to the same club we were for the show because we all looked like, you know, weirdos a little bit but it was <laughs> but it was also halloween so there was another kind of weirdo also out that night gotcha <laughs> but yeah. i remember like like seeing the light of the gas station and being like we gotta we gotta go ass but also being like do we want to stop out here and then getting closer and closer and seeing all the cars and then like walking in and hearing the guy in the middle of already in the middle of giving directions to where we needed to be <laughs> I love this story. That ends a lot better than my story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um. So anyway, they get into the uh, the empty, abandoned village. He's hoping that they'll find some food. They don't. They do not. And uh, Gilly is, is on the horse the other one died and he's like honestly that horse lasted a lot longer than i thought she and, would and also blaming himself for it because he's just like i was too much for the poor thing to handle because i'm so mm-hmm. fat have you met me i'm fat i'm sam and i'm fat yep <laughs> which i'm just like sam you didn't kill that horse i mean look you maybe sam did- is above the weight limit for most horses <laughs> as am i i would not be allowed to go horseback riding at ranches and things <laughs> So he may not be entirely wrong about that. I don't like to say it, but he may not be wrong. He's just and like, yeah, I probably did her in. And I'm just like, oh, no, Sam. <laughs> but yeah, it is like, whether it's true or not, it's just part of his whole, mm, like, yeah. well, you know, I ruin everything. Mm-hmm. And that's my role here. So yeah. Um, what I do find interesting, though, about this chapter is how frequently he laments being a coward and yet how he yep. just does everything that mm-hmm. needs doing anyway mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. i'm like yo dude that's kind of the whole yeah that's, he, he, that's you not being as much of a coward as you seem to think you are fought like all right i'm exaggerating it was a little more than five minutes but five minutes before he fucking deals with small paul he is imagining telling his father that his friends call him Sam the Slayer and his friend and his father refusing to believe it's true. Yeah. Even in his daydream. Right. Says, even like, doubt it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like you can't even daydream about a better fucking outcome of having a conversation with your fucking father. That is some really, really bleak shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh man. Sometimes you just wish that you could take a person and sort of like pop them out of their themselves so that you could put them on the outside so they could watch like who they are and what they do mm. you know because what because because you're like you're so you are so in yourself and your idea of who and what you are that you just you don't have an accurate vision of it and yeah. I just, I just wish I could take you and be like, "Hey, no, here, look at yourself," so that so you, so weird you know, you saying this because honestly, Rashawn, I have nobody that I would rather do that to than you. Well, this isn't about me. <laughs> <laughs> just, hmm, you know, you have this idea of yourself. 
and uh, we get a lot of letters and, and messages, and you just don't want to hear it. And I don't know how many more times I'm going to have to send you a <laughs> screenshot before you fucking start hearing it. But okay, ma'am, mm -hmm. we are talking about Sam Will Tarly right I, now. <laughs> I think you know what? I think it's my show, and we are not. We are not anymore. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, my big fucking fat mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, but but that's how I feel about Sam. You know, it's just his his self assessment. You know, yeah. is just so harsh and so not um, aligned with the truth of who he is. Not that, you know, and the thing too, that bums me out about Sam. And I think somebody has already told him this once or twice too, or maybe not, but I feel like somebody should have is it's like Sam thinks that because he feels fear. That's exactly what I was going to say that, you know, he what I thinks mean? that being brave means that you're not afraid at all. Right. And that's not what that means, mm -mm. you know, but, uh, and I just, if someone hasn't told him that I wish somebody would hurry up and tell him that. Um, but I, I think his father, Oh, man. It, it, he is just so about the performance of Fucking masculinity. Fucking fathers, yo. Yeah. This bit, too, about his dad telling him, like, catching him singing the song with his mother to, to baby, um, I'm going to say Dickin. baby Dickin. <laughs> it's baby Dickin. You got to say no. it. No. No. <laughs> it's so fun. I grew up with that fucking secret garden and there's a character named Dickon in that. So when everybody was like snickering about his name, I didn't even get why oh for my a God, minute. That's so funny. I just genuinely I was just like, what? That's just the name. That's just the name, right? Yeah. <laughs> you never met a Dickon before? Oh. <laughs> I saw the other day I was like reading about some scam and the guy's partner's actual real name was Harry Johnson. <laughs> and I was just like, man, I would become a scammer too. Just anything to need to use an alias. <laughs> You're like, no, I don't go by that. It's for work. My, um, I do something else. I think one of my favorites of like names like that, there's, and if I got it wrong, somebody can like, I'm just let us know or whatever. But I am pretty sure. There was a professional athlete. I think he might have been a race car driver. But his name was Dick Trickle. <laughs> <laughs> and I never recovered. sort of implication of like there is some mass and manliness here about it but Dick Trickle is just like eh, you know incontinence you know this is uh, bedpan oh. stuff that we're talking about that's just not that's not the vibe <laughs> and like the thing that kills me is that like he didn't have to be called that. No, Richard. Right? Like, like you could just be like, "All right, well, my name is Richard, or my name is Rick, or my name is Rich." Yeah. But no, he was like, "Yeah, yeah, just call me Dick. It's fine." Here it is. Did Richard you, you, Leroy Trickle was an American race car oh, driver. Oh, okay, I was right. Yep. <laughs> and you're right. It was Richard. He chose that nickname or they gave it to him and he kept it. Like at some point he was an adult and he could have changed the rules. Yeah. But he was like, nah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> God damn. That is, that is real bad. Man, I've heard some bad <laughs> names, but I feel like that really is the worst I've heard. <laughs> maybe he uh. was smart. Maybe he was smart then because people still talk about him, I guess. Because, you know, here I am bringing him up on a podcast. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and he was evidently, like, even as a professional race car driver, they would just mock his name, like, when they were doing the, the mm, announcements and oh stuff, according God. to this article, which, I mean, how can you not, how can you not, I'm sorry, I know it's, like, not pro, you gotta fucking keep a lid on it, it's about the racing, but, like, 
you have to say what are we gonna do pretend pretend like his name is not dick trickle and just like like just say it and not comment on it like i don't know if i were like the per i might be like richard richard trickle (laughs) i I might just decide you would refuse to engage Mm -hmm. (laughs) i am not going to be participating (laughs) in whatever it is y'all are doing over here because i'm assuming he did not enjoy it he apparently smoked cigarettes while racing oh that is that's okay so he was from like the 70s or some shit then right Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh god um oh god Uh he wound up taking his own life because he lost a that's awful oh no i didn't know that yeah in 2001 his family suffered a horrible tragedy when his granddaughter died in a car accident and he drove eventually like after a about 11 years later it was just like haunted him for some reason and he go went to her the cemetery and killed himself at her graveside and like called the police before pulling the trigger holy and was like hey shit. there's gonna be a body here so holy just, shit that got dark yeah i did not know it ended that way so uh sorry about that guy i probably could have just not but it, i was reading it as we were talking about him and it caught it just caught me man that is a really i'm wondering about like why it bothered him so much because it doesn't say he was involved in the accident that killed her so i don't know if he was and that was part of it or if it was just her death you know by itself but man Sorry, uh, Mr. Mr. Trickle, but you gave us some, you gave me one of the biggest laughs I have had in a minute just now. So God bless your memory. That was and, a fantastic uh, reaction. I don't think I've heard you <laughs> laugh like that in like, a, it's been a minute. Since... I think I'm going to insert the ad break right in the middle of my laughing and just have it like end ad break, come back and I'm still laughing. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um. Anyway, okay. Okay. So uh, they go, they go into like this hall that is remaining because the place is, you know, still shelter at least. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they build a fire and she's way better at this than him. He's just like, I can't fucking. And later on we have Sandor. He also can't build a fire. And I was like, what is with these dudes? <laughs> um, I guess Sandor has a, a pretty good excuse for hating Yeah, fire. exactly. <laughs> But uh, he's, like, thinking about, you know, the maps and where they could be. And then he just has to keep being like, look, we're going south. The wall Mm -hmm. will be there. Wherever we wind up, we'll be at the wall. It'll be fine. And he keeps having to sort of talk himself down from, like, a panic. Yeah, And and meanwhile, keeping the panic away from Gilly. Mm -hmm, And telling mm -hmm. her every time she asks, like, you know, how much far, how much, you know, basically, are we there yet? And he is giving her this answer that's just sort of like. Uh, well, it's not far, uh, and at least it's not as far as it was, which is the kind of answer that would drive me crazy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, but <laughs> but trying to like keep her reassured as he is internally just going fucking bonkers, yeah, uh, with doubt, with panic, with fear, um, but still maintaining this front for her behalf. And that's another thing too about Sam, right? Yeah, that, that he doesn't see the value in the fact that he is shouldering all this responsibility and panic and keeping it to himself to try to protect her. Yeah, man, he is just doing it and he doesn't see it and it sucks. Yeah. Man, this is like, this is the best kind of, she couldn't ask for somebody better with her at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of these times that he could have just ditched her really, you know, he defends her he looks out for her these other men that he's like thinking oh i wish i was more like i'm not sure that they would have been as helpful to her as he has been yeah all of the men up at the wall as we know exactly exactly (laughs) so yeah i think that is one of the things too that that sam doesn't take into account when he's comparing himself to all his other brothers right yeah he he is only ever focused on uh, how brave or how fearsome they may be in comparison to him. Mm-hmm. But he never really like does like a a character assessment of any of these right. men. You know, he never thinks, oh, well, that one was so good and so wise and, you know, so just and 
whatever. It's just always, oh, so-and-so wouldn't have been scared, mm-hmm. you know, or so-and-so was a good fighter. I mean, he can't even, poor Sam. I mean, he's not the guy. He's not a great hunter, it turns out. Correct. <laughs> Correct. You know, and he's not the guy that's going to go out starting a bunch of fights. You know, he's not going to be someone that rolls up on a pack of wildlings and like scares them and they all go running away. You know what I mean? He's not that guy. <laughs> I just pictured him going, huh. you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 I'm fucking right. but, but, but who he is, is the guy that's going to stay there and try to protect Gilly when they get, you know, attacked. Mm-hmm. You know, he's the guy that's going to tell her to go for safety and I'll stay here and try to deal with this thing, you know? Um, yeah. Sam just keeps shortchanging himself. And I, I, for one, wish wishes that he would cut it out. I know. And it's just, like, even the stuff about him navigating, I... He has studied these maps and stuff because he is a lot more scholastic. And I'm mm-hmm. like, these other dudes even know where to... which direction was which? Like, he's using the stars to determine south at night. And I'm mm-hmm. like... I don't know that they would remember like, constellations yeah, and how you to know. tell. You who, know? El- who else up there is doing that? Not to say that if you're like sporty, you can't also be smart. But you get what I'm saying, y'all. It's just there's sort of a, a prioritization right. that and also, happens. Yeah, and, and not just that the, you know, the, the they are not smart and that Sam is, but also that Sam had the benefit of an education where he was taught how to use right. those skills. Um, which and it's just like, I guess, and you know, like we were talking about Sam's dad, but I guess really it does always come back to that because it is not a quality or a skill that impressed his father. No. So Sam doesn't think it has any value. You know, like I was saying me. earlier, that bit about how his father not wanting Sam to be around his little brother because you were going to make him soft, you know? Yep. Um, just. Oof toxic it really is and so they're like camped out in this this long haul uh he this this bit about getting a horse in there i don't know why that made me laugh there's nothing funny about it but something about trying to force a horse through like a front door and a horse being like i would really rather not i don't understand what you're trying to do here <laughs> look i uh i appreciate the sentiment and everything but that's that's your space right? this is my space and i want to respect that you know, and then they finally get him in there and look what the fuck happens and now the horse is like god damn it what did i fucking say now <laughs> i could have been out of here right? no you had to hobble me okay <laughs> now i'm up in this bitch trapped with y'all <laughs> useless <laughs> yep i fell for that four horse he gets gutted yeah Ugh. it does not have a good end sucks um so yeah they're like uh he's having this dream this was written written in such a way y'all that i wasn't 100 percent sure it was really happening when the attack starts oh interesting you know, okay sam is uh in the middle of having this dream where uh he is hosting a feast back at uh, Horn Hill and uh, John and some of the other Night's other watch, uh, brothers from the Night's Watch are there. Um, his dad is not. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Um, and then everything is great and then he wakes up suddenly and it's cold and it's dark and he wakes up feeling creeped out. Yeah. Which is just the worst, you guys. When you know when it happens, right? <sighs> it's like like something wakes you up in the middle of the night, and you just feel like there's a monster at the edge of my bed, and I'm not gonna look down there at my feet because I know that motherfucker is at the edge of my bed. So I'm just gonna stare to the left <laughs> until I fall back <laughs> asleep. Or is that just me? I don't know. <laughs> no, I. Oh man, I have such vivid dreams too that sometimes I will dream that I woke up and that I like that something was there, and then I actually wake up. So it's like I'm about to relive this oh. really scary moment that I just had in the dream that went a certain way. And uh, I don't care yeah. for that. <laughs> the worst is when that happens and you got to pee. Oh my so God. it's like you got to get up out of the bed. <laughs> oh, the worst. I hate it. I hate talking about it. I don't like any of this. But uh, so, yeah, he, he wakes up. And the first thing Sam thinks of himself is that like he is God. Is this still a dream? 
I hope this is still a dream. Right. And it took me like a two, you know, a beat or two to be like, okay, no, he really is awake. Because Gilly says, uh, after Sam wakes up and he's still trying to assess, like, am I awake? Like, what is this really happening? Gilly says he's come for the babe. He smells him. Yeah, uh, this uh, was interesting. I didn't remember this line. Right? <laughs> what do you think of this concept? I buy it. A babe fresh born stinks of life. And you know what? I buy it as well. Yeah. He's come for the life. Like, yeah. It's funny, too, because that could have been, that could have hit different. And, I, you know, I'm I'm surprised that I buy it because it's such a a big statement, you know. They're coming for the babies. They can smell new life, you know. Mm-hmm. It could have really went a different way for me. <laughs> and I could have ended up really rolling my eyes. But for whatever reason, it really worked for me. And I was like, when she said it, first it was weird because she just announces it and Sam hasn't said anything at all, you know. Yeah. And she's just, so so in my imagination, the way she says it is just very kind of like, not hysterical, not like screaming, but very quiet and kind of like with a resignation of like, this is happening and there's nothing we can do about it. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. this is just what happens. They come for the babies. They can smell them. And this is just how that shit goes that I thought was really, really, really creepy. <laughs> yeah. And there's also the fact that he wakes up and, and it's not because she's screaming. Mm-hmm. She's not because she's, I think, just not trying to draw attention. And so it takes a minute for him to even piece together what he's seeing and that kind of like, you know, being out of it and somebody is already in danger and you're mm-hmm. just catching up. Mm-hmm. There is something about that, that I really it ratcheted up the tension for Be- me a lot. Yeah. Because they, they go to sleep all together under like all the furs. But when he wakes up, she is back over by the fire, not under the, under the furs with him anymore. So she's already moved. Yep. And he wakes up and she's no longer sitting beside him, but she's out at where the fire was. And like you say, he's still trying to like piece everything together and make sure he's fully awake. So it's that disorienting kind of like, you know, you go to bed, no one's there. And then you wake Mm -hmm. up in the middle of the night and he's not. You're just like, wait, what? What's happening here? And then he looks up, locates where where Gilly is by the fire. and And then she says the worst thing ever, which is, you know... They smell them. They came for the baby. I swear to God. <laughs> um, this isn't what I wanted to hear, it, Gilly. And Keep there's it to yourself. Yeah, and I didn't. <laughs> I was sleep and die in my sleep in peace. <laughs> so, so this is already terrible. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, we find out that it's somebody that they know. It's it's somebody that Sam knows. It's yeah. not just a, you know, generic, you know, red shirt white. It's 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 a guy with a name that we know. Yeah. And a this... guy who was like kind of sweet in his way. Mhm. And he's got a fucking raven eating his face. Yeah. Which she liked the ravens and they're like, "Well, back at you, buddy." <sighs> this is a uh, this is this is a uh... Mhm. And you know what? I don't know if we, because I have no memory of this, like this happening in the show. I can't remember if we get this moment in the show whatsoever. I feel like we do, but that's just a vibe. Like, I just, I cannot remember. So I was just like, Ray was eating his face. Did we do that on a show? <laughs> <laughs> because, because if we did and I forgot, how dare me? And if they didn't, how dare them? Yeah, you know, I don't know which which I'm more outraged about. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this. Uh, I'm actually going to go and take a look. I had forgotten to pull up uh, the notes that Austin sends me on this, but I'm going to take a look over here and see because sometimes he he told me basically. Um, I think in the last message, if I don't mention a specific difference, it means that it went the same way. Mm, okay. Um, and, oh, and, and I forgot to talk about too, because this is mentioned in his notes that Sam goes and says a prayer in front of the heart tree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and just is like, 
you know, look, you're not my gods, but I did say an oath to you when I joined the Night's Watch. So I don't feel totally out of pocket talking to you. Can you do anything? Yeah. Literally anything, man. Like, this is bad. She's got a child. This is like, yeah, we, we don't know what to do. Yeah, he's just like throwing like a Hail Mary out there to like any God that might be listening, even if it's just by accident. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you can hear me, please, somebody somewhere help us. It's such a desperate moment. Um, and, and it says, yeah, in the in the show, they combine Small Paul with killing the White Walker and have him do both in the same scene. Oh, um, like, okay. Or have they have, I guess, Sam, Small Paul is the White Walker that Sam slays. Okay, because that, that was, becomes the thing. All right, because I was trying to remember if we got Sam doing this twice, you know, in the mm -hmm. show. And I couldn't remember, you know, a second time where he, he like, you know kills a white on his own with no one really around mm -hmm. um so i guess all right that makes sense I, and i'm wondering too at the end of this chapter we don't know who it is but like some somebody who identifies himself as a brother shows up and like basically rescues them at the last second yeah and i remember on the show there's a moment like that with john but it's with benjamin but mm -hmm. it's John, he ends up, like, showing up out of nowhere and rescuing. Right. And he has been, like, if I'm not mistaken, like, Benjen has been turned, right? Mm -hmm. He's, like, on his way to being a white, but for some reason isn't, like, mindless yet or however that happens. I can't even remember if the show explained why he was still in a yeah. po in a position to, to mm -hmm. make decisions on his own and rescue John. But so I'm curious if whoever it is that shows up at the end of the Sam chapter, if that's Benjamin and if the show did a thing where they kind of like swapped it out right. or if this is someone else, but I'm, but I, uh, I'm really like, I'm leaning towards it's, it's probably Benjamin because like that feels weird to me that there are brothers that are turned that aren't, like I said, like mindless drones yet. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if the book is saying something special and specific about Benjamin, and that's why he is not, you know, just like a zombie. I'm going to tell you something here because it is, I guess it's like, it's not exactly a spoiler because we are in this. Blah, blah, blah. As far as we are in the book series for what Martin has written so far, we don't get the identity of this person. Oh. But in the show, like you said, this is Benjen. Oh. And everybody before the show was theorizing it was probably Benjen Stark because the, the fact that he is looked for for so long and specifically pursued by john for so long is just kind of it felt like it tied it all in a neat bow here mm. he is you know but evidently george r. r martin has said specifically that it is not oh get out yeah so i i think they did it in the show as benjamin because it was a fan theory and they thought yeah oh, let's be cute but i think maybe that's like Oh. just for the funds and not actually going to be canon unless martin's lying because authors have been known to just fucking lie and it's true just you know and i don't blame them because why are you gonna tell the? why would you do that i'm gonna <laughs> tell you shit wait and read it wait but, another uh, 20 years exactly and then read it on your deathbed <laughs> you get to know maybe <laughs> um so yeah it's sort of an odd thing where uh there's still a lot of people who are like, no, it is. It's Benjamin. I know he said it's not, but it is. But, you know, according to the official word, it is not. Mm. So who can tell? Okay. That's really yeah. interesting. Huh. There's um, a lot of little things like that in this series. I was just going to um, ask. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's things that they do on the show that it feels like are a specific reference to a fan theory. Um I'm actually going to bring this up because I had sort of waited to see if you would come around to mentioning it last time when we were in Catelyn's chapter, but they have to Lisa go with Rob to the wedding and they knife her in the gut specifically to kill the child. And Rob in the book sent away his wife whom he had been trying to impregnate repeatedly and there are a lot of theories that she may be pregnant somewhere 
with his child still. Oh. And that that could potentially be something. Huh. Um, but and that it felt like George R. R. Martin had them write the moment in the show of her getting knifed in the stomach specifically to be like, okay, will you shut up about the kid? There's no kid. <laughs> stop it. End it. Let's stop with this whole, this whole <laughs> weird thing that y'all have. And, uh, I, you know, maybe it is, or maybe it's just another, like, uh, we're going to, we're going to do a little like inside jokesy about everybody thinking this particular thing, because honestly, really when it comes down to it for me even if she were pregnant like what so <laughs> yeah <I laughs> at mean, this point like yeah not, and yeah I whatever I, I don't really see what a difference that would make um you know it's not like there's a kingdom for his his kid to inherit mm-hmm. you know um hmm hmm interesting um, um anyway so yeah so uh, he he has this this song that he sings to her and he's also talking about what the wall is like. Um, and I just really liked this little scene. Like you had said, him trying to like comfort her, keep her from mm-hmm. panicking, talking about how warm it will be and how much food they will have. And she asks him to sing and he's really reticent because his dad was such a dick about it. But then he does and she like compliments him and says he has a really nice voice. And immediately he's like, oh, you should hear the other guy sing it. Yeah, guy's yep. really great. <laughs> <laughs> I love too because when I was reading the song uh, and uh, it got to the end of the song and the first thing I was like, oh, they didn't, uh, they didn't do The Stranger. Which I was like, I guess that uh. wouldn't be great for a child's lullaby. So I get it. And then like <laughs> immediately Gilly is like, hey, I thought there were seven guys. You only sing about six. <laughs> Yeah, we don't uh, we don't mm. talk about that one. And next then it, question. And then in like and then, then then the next chapter, uh having the hounds horse be called strangers. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, book. Calm down. <laughs> the horse that's called Stranger, who is like, get the fuck away from me <laughs> to everybody who comes anywhere near mm-hmm. him. Um so yeah, they manage to eat a little bit of these sausages that we've got, they have a little bit of food at least. He has this dream that you had mentioned, and it's real weird. It's sort of like, like you said, his father isn't there. It's all of his friends, and they're not in blacks, which I thought was significant. Mm -hmm. And so in that aspect, it seems like a happy dream. Mm -hmm. They're they're eating fucking uh, roast something or the other. But they're slicing it with heart's bane. Yeah, with a fucking sword. And I'm just like, I feel like there's there's something there. It's not I don't... super practical. <laughs> <laughs> and um, choice, but sure. And then uh, when everything is done and he goes to bed, um, he goes to the room that he used to share with his sisters in the dream. But in the dream, it's Gilly in the bed. Right. Uh, and she doesn't have the baby in the dream but she's leaking milk from her her breast but there's no baby yeah which is uh you know that sort of um i don't know if he's going for it on purpose but that sort of phenomenon like where when a woman is breastfeeding and she'll start to um like spontaneously lactate Uh uh-huh and there's no there's no baby there or sometimes it can be brought on by like hearing other babies cry or whatever Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and so the fact that she's leaking but there's no baby there just feels like a real big kind of you know it's like it's suggesting something interesting that Uh, didn't occur to me okay and then to have them wake up and her first thing being like they've come to like basically steal my child you Mm -hmm. know and i was just like hmm kind of dreams are you having there sam what kind of dream are you having (laughs) that's interesting i didn't even like think of that but that does that does interest me now Hmm, okay i see um so yeah he wakes up like with that freaked out feeling and i was sort of like why is he freaked out because that seemed like a nice dream Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but maybe it's the baby being missing that sort of feels wrong in the moment maybe that's part of it i don't know yeah and it, um, and it just yeah and it doesn't say it doesn't tell us anything that woke him up just that he woke up suddenly and at mm-hmm. first because it, the only thing it mentions i mean it mentions mostly like the atmosphere like the air it felt frozen it was so cold even you know colder than it was and in the, the horse is making noise and kicking in the corner 
right. which I imagine is, you know, pretty noisy. But the, but it doesn't say explicitly that, oh, the sound of the horse, you know, woke woke Sam right, up. It, right. it doesn't seem like that's what woke him up at all. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, there's this weird shadow ambling towards them, which I, again, did not care for. <laughs> Uh, and then it says the shadow became small, Paul. I really like that turn of phrase as well. Yeah. That sort of expression of when you are trying to make something out and you, you know, you you don't know what you're looking at and then suddenly Mm -hmm. it becomes something that you recognize. Yeah. It's a really, uh, I, I agree. It is evocative. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Sam says, go away. I I swear to God. And you know, I wasn't even mad about it. I was like, yeah, you know what? Go away. (laughs) Oh, we don't want you here. And he is sitting here ready to buy Gilly some time. Mm -hmm. While he's pissing himself. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because he still tells Gilly, go calm the horse down, take her out. You Mm -hmm. go do that. Even though he is so terrified, rightfully so. Yup. You know? And again, sir, you don't think that you're tough. And I get that I literally pissed myself, doesn't feel like a flex. <laughs> Fair. However, we had Chet piss himself at just the sound of the third horn. Mm-hmm. So I feel like you're all right. Yep. You are, you are. Yep trapped in a mm-hmm. hall with a white walker that caught you while you were literally sleeping mm-hmm. you, you get to piss your pants yeah, you, you get to it's fine it's just you a small woman and a fucking infant mm-hmm. you know so yeah you get to you get to be like so fucking scared that this happens yeah um and he's telling you you know because she starts to protest a little bit because you know he's going to stay there while he tells her to leave and she and he's like oh i've got the knife i have the, the dragon glass knife in a kind of sort of I'll be fine, you know, mm-hmm, sort of mm-hmm. gesture towards her. But um and he starts talking to Paul. You know, like trying to do you do you remember me? Uh we knew each other. I'm Sam. You carried me when I couldn't walk. You didn't have to do that, but you did. Yeah. Uh and even as Sam is doing this, talking to small Paul and trying to like one, keep his attention off of Gilly and on to Sam himself. He thinks to himself, I am such a coward. You know. Sir. He's begging Paul, like, not to hurt us. You know, why would you want to hurt us? And then <laughs> oh, Paul gets distracted, turns around, focuses on Gilly. And that's all it took. Yep. Because Sam is about that action, (laughs) y'all. I love this for him so much. He puts, he he does what he needs to do when it needs doing. And it is just delightful to see him pull it out when he thinks he hasn't got anything in him. He's, you have though, sir. Mm -hmm. It's right there. So he fights, this broke my heart. You guys, he has the dragon glass. Small Paul has no reaction. Like he can't tell what it is. Mm-hmm. And he gets a chance when the horse rears and Paul is like distracted to come at him. But he had forgotten that Paul is wearing chain mail. Yep. So this thing shatters on his chain mail. I, I had forgot all about how it just breaks. And I was like, this I, is so rude. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> When that thing fucking shatters and all he has is the fucking hilt in his hand, I didn't know what to do with myself. Mm-hmm. I was just like, "Oh fucking come on!" Yep, exactly. you know, like you come, like come on, let him have something, <laughs> right? And uh, he, uh, this then it gets really bad. He pulls out the other the other dagger that he has. That's just like the standard issue one, um, and he can't really get that to do anything either. Can't get it through the chain mail. Drops it. It goes like flying across the fucking floor. And then Small Paul puts his hands around Sam's throat. And it is just downhill. Yeah. For a minute. 
Like, Sam's like, he's going to fucking try to rip my head off. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> literally exactly what he's going to do, my man. And it's such a moment, too, because, like, when I was reading it and you think, oh, hands are on a throat, I'm going to strangle you. You know, that's mm-hmm. just that's what you think. And so even though that is also terrible and it can kill you, I feel like Sam is just like, oh, this guy is going to like strangle me till I suffocate. Mm-hmm. And then the moment where it clicks, where it's like, oh, wait, no, he's about to pop he's, my right? head off like a fucking <laughs> beer bottle cap. And like how that must have <laughs> that realization just <laughs> like Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Like, how could something that was already objectively terrible get so much worse so fast? <laughs> but, oh, um, man. And, and so, yeah, he's doing this. And uh, then Paul gets like a, not Paul, Sam has a moment of being like, you know what I can do? <laughs> and uses his size and weight and just sends them both you know, toppling over mm-hmm. uh, to the to the ground, and Sam is able to reach into what's left of their fire and grab something and just sh- cram it right into fucking Paul's mouth. Just yeah, so with such force that like Sam felt teeth shatter. Yeah, which has got it. That had to be like really satisfying, right? Honestly, yeah. this is just a very badass moment. Mm-hmm. I mean. I, did he have was it were his hands bare? Did he just burn himself real bad? Um, it's not mentioned that he feels pain or anything, but I was no. like, I know that his hands are one of his hands at least is wrapped really heavily because it, he mentions earlier that one of the times he tried to start a fire, he ended up like slicing oh, his hand himself. open. Yeah. So and and I know that it's mentioned in this chapter also that at some point before bed, Sam takes his gloves off for a little while by the fire to warm them up. And then immediately regrets it because once the warmth and the feeling comes back, it's a reminder of how bad his hands hurt. Right. So I'm pretty sure he probably put his gloves back on before they went That makes to bed. sense. Um, but yeah, there is no mention of like whether he burned his hand or not. It doesn't seem like it. Um, and then, you guys, for a second, I thought that the fucking smashing his face in with the rest, what was left of the fire, the wood and whatever, mm-hmm. didn't do anything. Oh, I know. It takes a second, right? right? I was yeah. like, what? Wait, hold up. Mm-hmm. What? What are we saying now? Not even fire? <laughs> and I got, I just like, I, I had a real, a real moment of losing all hope, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> that bit where you stop and you go, I thought we had agreed what the rules were. <laughs> what are we doing? Yep, yep, yep. And uh, And then finally, finally, the uh Paul's face just bursts into flames and and that's when finally his hands drop from around Sam's neck and Sam's able to like roll away. And uh this then things got super weird, y'all. I mean things are already weird, but then they get super, super weird. And I don't know I don't know what any of this is. I'm not even gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Uh Sam is like going outside to let Gilly know that he killed it, you know, that they're safe. And she is surrounded. Yeah. A dozen or more are there. And a lot of them he recognizes. It's a mixture of wildlings and other people, but he recognizes like four or five of them. Again, just really rude. So rude. (laughs) I mean, we don't, it doesn't, okay, sure. All right, fine. And they are like in the middle of like disemboweling the poor horse. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so the whole scene is just fucking gnarly. And Sam says with a whimper, it's not fair. And I felt that. Yep. Like, I 100%, I was like, you are right. This is not fucking fair. This is bullshit. (laughs) Indeed, sir. Yeah, that's just one of those moments where, like, it, does it feel real childish? Yes. But is that my immediate reaction also? Yes. yes. <laughs> Look, sometimes I'm childish. What can yeah. I do? Exactly. Like, that is the appropriate response, considering that this this man who thinks he can't really do anything and then has these moments where he's able to do something, right? And, like, mm-hmm. actually save himself and save someone else. And 
you think you're going to have a moment of like relief and maybe a moment to, to be, I don't know, uh, not proud of yourself, but just sort of like, fuck, okay, we got I feel like that. you accomplished something. You know? And yeah. you don't even get that. It lasts mm-hmm. a whole 10 seconds before you see yourself being outnumbered and there's no way you can get out of the situation. And then he's fucking Ravenjaw. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about any of this. I have no idea what the fuck this is. Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> I had, I had uh, forgotten how this goes here, but basically these ravens seem to be like buds of mm-hmm. his mm-hmm. they're they're coming in hot yeah. to help keep the whites off him and gilly mm-hmm. and uh and they're it, also like repeating fair fair and it, fair far and fear yeah which okay yeah again okay <laughs> he heard the dark red leaves of the weirwood rustling whispering to one another in a tongue he did not know it really feels like some god's answering your prayer kind of shit right yep (laughs) and uh all of a sudden there's thousands of ravens and they begin to swarm these whites and i really loved this they they begin to swarm them one of the ones that one sitting on his shoulder is saying go go Mm -hmm, go mm -hmm. and there he they here suddenly because he's like we're gonna run and gilly's like to fucking where and they hear a man yell brother and he's riding an elk that's 10 feet high at the at the shoulder Mm -hmm. which i can't even picture that's like that's a moose right it's gotta be a moose (laughs) i just i'm assuming um but the way it's described they descended on the whites in angry clouds. They swarmed round Chet's face and pecked at his blue eyes. They covered the cistermen like flies. They plucked gobbets from inside Hake's shattered head. There were so many that when Sam looked up, he could not see the moon. Mm. Which, what? And then, later, all around him, the whites flailed at the black wings and sharp beaks that assailed them, falling in an eerie silence with neither a grunt nor cry. Which I picture them grunting. I picture them uh, Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. zombies. And to rethink the scene and realize that they're just attacking, but they're not making any noises makes it way creepier. The whole thing is really just, you know, unsettling from Mm -hmm. top to fucking bottom. Also, the the bird that's talking to, to Sam has been on his shoulder. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, uh, a little bit yeah. too familiar, sir. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so then they hear the shout, and um, they don't know who it is. It's got a hood covering his face, but Sam sees that he's wearing all black, and is just like, "Oh, okay." And then yeah. um, they get on the, the elk, and Sam sees that his hands are black and cold, with fingers mm-hmm. hard as stone, which were the same hands that he felt around his neck. Obviously, you know. Yeah. Uh but uh, but at this point like oh well exactly like what are they gonna, <laughs> what are they going to do like not like ride off to safety with this guy so yeah. Yep. That's so, so that is the end of that is them riding off with this dude. That's so wild to find out that it as of today where the books are there's no answer to who this is that has saved them. Yeah. Hmm. Indeed. Hmm. Yeah, I really enjoy the the fact that certain things are still mysterious. And I also like the idea that maybe Martin's just trolling everybody by having certain things included in the show. So everybody's like, ha, see? <laughs> and then maybe not, sir, actually. Maybe you're patting yourself on your back a little bit early and you should chill for a minute because, I don't know, he seems like he could be kind of mean-spirited about <laughs> some stuff. <laughs> um, all right, before we get into the next chapter... I'm going to take a little break. A little Spanish fly. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back. It's time to talk about Aria. Shit's flooding. 
That's the main thing going on in these chapters. It's the main takeaway. Yep. <laughs> it is wet as fuck. We got a, a wet ass Westeros. <laughs> um and there are just like whole there's a village that he's like planning on dealing with and they roll up and that shit is underwater. Underwater, yeah. It's there's uh some dudes who have made a home on the boat, but uh otherwise doesn't seem like anybody is still here. I love that uh Arya has been trying to figure out like where they are, you know, that sense of mm-hmm. like Sam, you know, trying to figure out where she is. And she is so turned around because she has just assumed that the hound is taking her back to King's Landing. So she sees this river and she's just like, this is Black uh, Blackwater Rush. And he doesn't answer her until towards the end of this chapter. Yeah. You know, uh, this, this, because I don't remember all of the finer points of the aria in, uh, Clegane Roadshow I know an episode or two ago when I was talking about what I do remember from the show and how it was I felt it was really clear that Arya wasn't going to be in real significant danger from the Hound my my experience watching watching the show I don't ever remember feeling like he could fucking kill her Mm. you know what I mean Mm -hmm. but also I think that that is in part my overall takeaway aft from at from seeing the whole story play out. You know, by the time right. they get to the end of their time together and she finally gets away, their relationship had changed, you know? So reading this chapter, and this is at the very beginning, I can't remember if things were this uh scary mm-hmm. in the sh- in the show's portrayal, but this chapter, uh I was reading it like, shit, girl, you might be in danger, mm-hmm. <laughs> which yep. is not something I really remember feeling from the show. But, you know, like I said, that could just be because by the end, you know, it was just you just didn't think I didn't get that energy from them by the end of that that storyline with them traveling together. Mm-hmm. I, I don't ever remember being on my sofa being like, oh, my God, is he going to kill her this week? But reading this chapter, I was like, girl, if you don't stop talking out of turn right? i was so glad towards the end when she was like i thought it but i didn't say it i was like girl good finally <laughs> starting to catch on this is not a man to play with he doesn't find you charming <laughs> he does not find you charming at all he does not think that you're precocious and you know look at you thinking you're badass isn't that cute no he's treating her like i treat children <laughs> <laughs> which is i am i am unamused there's a couple of moments that he does seem to be like oh you mm-hmm. but it's like literally you're you're thinking about how to kill me huh <laughs> that's hysterical you that's not gonna work mm-hmm. i am way better at this than you the glee at which he that he takes uh when he realizes that she is like thinking about sansa <laughs> yep <laughs> And yep. he's like, oh, you would hear it is. Sister. <laughs> yep. And also, you know, it's it, because we know what his deal is with his brother. Something about that, I feel like, warms cockles, you know? <laughs> 100%. He's like, uh, we're not so different, you and I. <laughs> One of those moments. Um, But, okay, so we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. She, This is the moment where she's asking if it's the Blackwater Rush because she still thinks he is bringing her back to King's Mm -hmm. Landing to Mm -hmm. Cersei. And uh, he is letting her ride double on the horse, but he has warned her that if she doesn't shut the fuck up, he is going to trust her and just toss her over the back of the horse like a hog. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) She is, and, and and we get, like, a recap of her various attempts. Like, there was an escape attempt. When she thought he was, no, one night she thought he was sleeping and she was going to just bash his fucking head in with a rock. Yes. And so she's like creeping over to murder him in his sleep. And he like eyes open and he catches her in the act. I love so, this for her so much. So uh, after that, he like rolls her in a bed wrap or something every night. Because <laughs> she can't be trusted. <laughs> while he's her up in ropes. <laughs> he's got her swaddled. And she, I just picture this. They don't do this in the show, and I wish they had because that is some comedy <laughs> gold right there. Seeing her little face poking out oh of this burrito god. like it's... a papoose. <laughs> oh my god, I would love this. Oh, <laughs> so like, 
there's another uh, part where she like yells at him, like, "Why don't you just kill me? Like you killed Micah." And he is so over her throwing that in his face. He has yep. had enough of that. Does not want to hear about it anymore. And uh, tells her that if she says it again, he's going to fucking beat her so bad that she'll wish she was dead. And I believed him. Which is, which is why I was concerned for her well-being throughout <laughs> the ship. <laughs> yes, this is a man who is convincing with his arguments. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like I don't, like I said, I don't remember ever feeling like, as I, I feel like he's probably made that threat several times on the show. You know, I'll kill you, I'll beat you, I'll leave you, I'll dump you. And I don't know if I ever really felt like, oh shit. Yeah. But yo, just in this, when he says that in the chapter, I said, girl... I need you to start thinking very carefully before you speak. Mm -hmm. This is what, like, they take the edge off of a lot of characters in the show. There are a lot of people who, it's like, yeah, they're tough, but they're also likable and funny. And that's not to say that the Hound isn't likable in the books, but he's, like, likable despite himself rather than kind of being likable for himself. You know what I mean? This fucker in the book is menacing as fuck. Mm -hmm. So... (laughs) Um, so she's, uh, she's also, um, thinking, Ari is still thinking that, uh, Barrick and the rest of the crew will be coming for her, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is like heartbreaking because I don't believe that's true for a second. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't personally believe that they were coming for her. I might be wrong, but I, I feel like they were like, oh, well, there goes that. It wasn't meant to be. We got I feel the- like they may have been coming for her and then they realized they lost the trail and it was just kind of, well, they, yeah. Maybe they try like a couple hours right after yeah, that. Yeah, you know, a minute or two. But, uh, mm-hmm. but I mean, even the Hound is is considering the fact that they could be after him because he, you know, does that whole thing at the ferry crossing as mm-hmm. well. But she really is, you know, counting on the fact that uh, when they can't cross the river, she's like, oh, good that's going to slow us down. And that means Barrick will be able to catch up to us. And, uh, yeah, oh, honey, baby. I don't think that's, that's how that's going. Yeah. So they're heading towards this Haraway town that, uh, the Hound thinks that they should go to. And that's the place that ends up being all flooded when they get there. And, uh, he tells her something about this place, this, uh, this story about old King Andahar. Yeah, what? <laughs> this is a weird one because I she had never heard of him. Um, she had never, and he says, "Haraway shouldn't be too far where Lord Root stables old King Andahar's two-headed water horse. Maybe that we'll ride across." A nonsense sentence, right? That is a lot of <laughs> a lot of words. To say not a lot that I understand. <laughs> Yes, and so indeed. I was like, we're going to get like a whole bunch more on this, right? But then we don't. <laughs> sure don't. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I was thinking she was just going to say who's Andahar. Yeah. But she has sort of decided to just not talk, which probably is the better choice. Yeah, because she has all these questions. She's like, I've never heard of this king. I've never seen a horse with two heads and not one that could run on water. But then she's like, but you know what? I probably shouldn't ask any of these questions. So I'm just going to sit here and mind my business. <laughs> yep. And, yep. Um, she's also sick. And like, yeah. you, know, and, you know, she's sniffling and sneezing and doesn't feel good and all that. And uh, the hound is is not particularly moved by any of her discomfort. He sure isn't. He Wipe- like stops to like help try and make the fire because it's clear she's in distress but when he can't make a fire he's just like oh well <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, also hate a fires point. anyway so i guess that's fine <laughs> i didn't even really want the fucking fire mm-hmm. <laughs> uh there's also a point where one night she decides uh he's going to pee and she's like i'll just steal his horse and his horse is just like bitch you thought oh my god <laughs> i fucking loved that so much his horse <laughs> His horse plus, like, obviously Sandor is aware that his horse is absolutely vicious to Mm -hmm. everybody but him, Mm -hmm. which is a selling point, I would imagine. Right. I feel like he worked really hard to get it that way, right? That didn't just happen overnight. (laughs) But I like to think that he knew she was trying to sneak up on that horse. And he was like, let me go pee so that she can learn something. Mm -hmm. Because 
she's gonna have to figure out that's not an option so i may as well just let it happen (laughs) (laughs) there's also a really fun little bit where she mentions that sometimes he just fucking falls asleep while they're riding because he's just like yeah my horse got it it's fine Mm -hmm. (laughs) so it just it just i don't know i was like okay yeah they have a a relationship he trusts this horse this horse trusts him he's not worried about her being able to steal shit that horse ain't going nowhere with her (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, they get to this place, and finally they, they meet these ferrymen, and uh, Clegane promises to pay them once they get to the other side on his knight's honor, to mm-hmm. which Arya is just like, really? Oh knight's honor? Everything about it, she is just like, wrong, lie, nope, that's a lie too. He doesn't have that. He's not that. Uh-uh, that's not happening either. And she's just keeping it inside. Yep, yep, inside. yep. <laughs> Um, there's a moment too, she loses her temper because they keep referring to her as his son. Mm-hmm. And that is just beyond the pale. She could take a lot, but she's not going to fucking stand for that. Yep. And she screams, I'm not his stupid son. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, my God. I don't know. <laughs> and he grabs her by the back of her collar. Lifts her up off of the deck. He screams at her. You know, how many times have I told you to shut the fuck up or something? Yep. And then, like, shakes her so hard her teeth rattle. Yep. And the best I can tell, all of the ferrymen were like, that is none of my business. Very much so. Yeah. Because literally no one has anything to say about this abuse of this child. <laughs> nope. This nope. is how they do it up in this Westeros. <laughs> this is the parenting class. Okay. So step one, grabbing your son by the collar. <laughs> Back of the collar, lift him up into the air. Now shake. Nope. Not hard enough. Got to go a little harder than that. Does the teeth rattle? There you got it. There you got it. <laughs> <laughs> So they, uh, so they're they're making this ferry cross, and she starts thinking, you know, I could just fucking jump over the side, you know, like I would be gone before the hound could fucking do or say or even think anything. And that water does not look great, nope. but but I, you know, I was a pretty good swimmer. John said I was a really good swimmer, uh, and you know what. It can't be worse than how I'm doing now. Can't be wetter than I am now. <laughs> and so she's really, really thinking about doing this. She's considering this. this very seriously. Yeah. And then right in the middle of this contemplation, the ferrymen all start going nuts because there is a like a giant piece of tree barreling mm-hmm. towards them in the river, which has got to just be terrifying, right? I swear to God, this was so harrowing. I don't really think of things like this. Like, it wouldn't, like, I don't know. I'm just not really of the mind of being like, I sure hope no floating tree comes by and ruins right. this whole experience for us. Like, it just never <laughs> occurred to me that there was something we needed to be worried about. Yeah, any boat that I have been in, a tree would be fine. Right? <laughs> you know, it'd be like, oh, up. Oh. And there it goes. I guess and that's like, done. whenever you see, like, video of people that do, like, that that water rafting, especially, like, that really intense, like, rapid, nope. you know, white rapid shit. Yeah. And the clips I always see, they'll be, like, you know, bouncing along and it's all going. And then there'll be a rock. And it'll be like, oh, my God, there's a rock. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm always like, what do you mean? How are you surprised? <laughs> Yes, yes, you're in a river. <laughs> That's where rocks are. Like That's a thing. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the rapids too, right? Like they need something to be bouncing off against and shit. Mm-hmm. That's how you know, that's happening. It's, it's all tied together. <laughs> <laughs> but um so yeah, this fucking tree situation is a real goddamn problem. I'm over here making jokes about it, but it's very serious business. And they narrowly escape. And they lose somebody. Yeah. Guy goes overboard. And he goes over and is gone so fast. She's like, mm, 
it's a good thing I didn't jump over this. Yeah, side. it is like real. Like they have a rope to throw him, and there's nobody there. Yeah, to but throw it to. by the time they like, by the, by the time they're able to react, that motherfucker is gone. Yeah, and she's just like, well, maybe I'll wash up someplace downstream. <laughs> but even she doesn't believe the bullshit she's trying to sell herself. And it just says she she had lost all desire to go swimming, which is such an understated way to put that. I swear that like. Again, I really appreciate Arya's re-evaluation <laughs> of everything that she's doing in this chapter because she's so stubborn most of the time. Mm-hmm. And she will stay pretty single-minded and just be like, well, they're trying to stop me. But obviously, the mm-hmm. fact that they're trying to stop me means that I should just keep doing the thing. But this chapter is a very particular, like, yeah, you might have a point. Yeah, yeah. And eventually he yells for her to go back in and it says she like went meekly. Yep, yeah. There's not even any push. There's a bit earlier, I think, too, when she's talking about at one point she was carving her name into trees, hope, hope hoping that Barrick and them would see it. Mm-hmm. And he catches her doing He keeps catching her with all her little, you know, plans and plots and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and scares her enough that she stops, like, trying to do, like, she, she'll try something new, but mm-hmm. she won't, like, go back and do the thing that he already caught her doing. And so by the time this happens, it really does feel like he has, even though we don't see him, I mean, we see him being really rough with her, but as far as I know, he hasn't actually, like, beaten her bloody yet at this point, no. right? But he has... He has calmed that ass down. I don't know another way to put it, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what Indeed. I mean? He, yep. has had, he has had such an effect on her that, yeah, she is not being the sort of kind of really spunky, rebellious, yep. you can't tell me. Oh, I know, right? I'm that's sorry. A, that's that's a forever shame. ruined for me. That is, you know what? It, I think you just ruined it for me. Uh-huh. In real sorry. time. Real time. Because I didn't have a problem <laughs> with it and you just you just ruined it. But you know what I mean? Like, like a lot of that is out of her. And, and I think also a part of it might be she's tired. Yeah. She's been running for a while now. She's also really sick at this point. We know, you know. So I think a lot of her demeanor is probably tied up to that and not just a reaction to the threat of him, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that she has just... She's been running now for like three or fucking four books at this point, dealing with all these different people that have captured her, that she's gotten away from, only to be captured by another fucking group. And he even tells her at some point, I forget, I don't know if we got to it or we already went over it, but she makes, she's, he says something like, uh, you fucking get away from me and somebody else is just going to fucking snatch you up. Yeah. You know? Which is, Jesus Christ. And he says, like, somebody worse. And she says, there is nobody worse. And he's like, "Uh, there's my brother who you clearly haven't met or you wouldn't say that. And she's like, I have met him. And then she stops and she's like, God, I have met him. And he's right. That's way worse. Right, right, Ah." right. She remembers, like, yeah. He, on the other hand, is just like, oh, word? Mm -hmm. How did you meet him? Because... Because when she says she's met him, she also names, you know, Polliver and Raph and the Tickler. And Hound is like, okay, you maybe would have met my brother at court or something, maybe. Yeah. But how the fuck did you meet those assholes? Because he doesn't bring them around. Um, And she just says that, uh, she tells him, I know, I know them from the village, the village by the lake where they caught Gendry and me. Mm-hmm. Which is not entirely true, right? Correct. She knows them from Heron Hall. <laughs> I mean, that's where she met them first, right? But so. she doesn't. She doesn't go into like which being there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's being kind of cagey with him, which is which I think is funny because uh, so far up until this point, we know that he doesn't answer any of her fucking questions. Mm-hmm. So he has a question for her finally, and she's just like giving him the bare minimum of the answer. <laughs> Tee-hee. Yeah. So, and, and we kind of skipped over this part, but these men want to charge three dragons for the crossing, which is exorbitant, but he agreed to it. Yeah. And then they want to charge more. They want to charge the three that they agreed to, but then they want three more for the guy that they went overboard mm-hmm. so yeah and i was like look i i sympathize but also you're really banking on him having that extra three and i don't know that's something that you want to just assume but 
fucking, he says, he, he says, here, take 10. And for a second, I was like, oh, he's being really nice and generous. <laughs> I really yep. thought he was giving him 10 dragons. <laughs> and then he, he tells them, I'll pay you after we go across Knight's Honor. And I wanted this man to push back so hard, but he just says, good enough. And I'm like, oh, boy. Yep. yep. And so, yeah, they cross and Sandor gives him the receipt for a thousand, how many? Like Nine thousand dragons. That's the one. And then tells the guy, ten of it's going to be for you. Yep. But the I'll rest of it, change. right? <laughs> Which is fucking what? <laughs> Trifling. He gives him an IOU, but wants change back. Like, <laughs> yep. Yeah, he is just. <laughs> uh, and then this is basically like, you know, it's your fault for fucking trusting me. Knights don't have any honor. That's your fucking fault. Mm-hmm. And uh, they they can't do shit about it except throw some rocks at him as they're fucking leaving. And then he says to Arya, and you know what? The fairy won't be able to cross back into the morning. And they're not going to fucking take no promises from nobody, which is going to make it really hard for your fucking friends to try to follow us. Yeah. And it's a, I don't know. It's a, it was a moment for me to be like, Oh, you know what? That's right. He's not, he's not dumb though. Yeah. You know, I don't tend to think of him as being particularly clever or strategic or like, you know what I mean? One of the great minds of Westeros or (laughs) books or anything like that. But it does not mean that he is not smart in his own way, you know? Yeah. Um, and I like the idea that he was being a dick and that was welching on his promise, but also underneath it, it had an additional purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to throw a little obstacle in their mm-hmm. way. Just a little extra thing. And, yep. Uh, so, yeah, so then they, yeah, they start talking about, uh, he's so intrigued too when he's like, my brother caught you. And then had and had no idea what he had in his hand. And then he, he is delighted. He cannot wait to rub this shit in his brother's face. It is really petty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'll be sure and tell him that before I cut his heart Jesus out. Christ. And she's just like, "What? That's your brother?" And he's like, "Hmm." And Didn't you ever have someone you wanted to kill, like it, a brother, or or maybe a sister? <laughs> And then he is just, again, <laughs> delighted because he sees something in her face that clicks for him. And he's like, oh, that's it. That's the yep. one. Uh, and then he, he says, oh, the, he calls her the wolf bitch. He wants <laughs> to kill the pretty bird. And she's like, no, I'd like to kill you, though. <laughs> yeah. And he says to her, well, you know what? Because, again, talking about, like, Micah. And he's like, yeah, I I did that shit. And I've done even way worse shit than that. But you know what? I've also done some good shit. And I saved your sister. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't believe him. Nope. He says, she sang me a song. And she's like, "Mm, liar. And then he's like, all right, you know what? I have had enough. You think you know everything. (laughs) You don't even know where the fuck we're going. You think this is the black water, you idiot. And says, where do you think I'm taking you? I and love she this. says, back to King's Landing. And as she's saying it, she's like, she realizes That's not she's it, got it huh? fucked up. Yep, yep. Yep. I love that moment. Uh, I realize all of a sudden that the way he asked the question, it was wrong, but she had to say something. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is when he tells her, you know, fuck Joffrey, fuck the queen, fuck King's Landing, fuck all that shit. Fuck that little gargoyle she calls a brother, which was just rude. Really mm-hmm. unnecessary, sir. And I'm done with all the bullshit. I'm done with the city. I'm done with the King King's Guard. Like fuck them. And tells her that the river is the trident. Figure it out in your head if you can, which is again rude. <laughs> <laughs> and tells her, I'm gonna do what they said they were gonna do. I'm gonna ransom you all. Because Barrick and them stole my money, so I stole you. It's only fucking fair. I'm not mad at that. That feels pretty fair. It does, right? And he yeah. says, uh, you know, and if your family, if your brother was as smart as everybody says, he would fucking want me on his side. Maybe I'll even kill my brother for him. He'd probably like that. And she's, and then she does this thing where she's basically like, 
my brother would never take you. You're like beneath him. You know, yeah. he, he would never take someone like you. As if that's going to be like really hurtful. Mm-hmm. Then I'll take as much gold as I can carry, laugh in his face, and ride off. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I, He's I, like, I'm low-key hoping he doesn't. Listen, I'm low-key <laughs> standing him in this moment. It's very uncomfortable <laughs> for me. <laughs> and then says, and he'd be an asshole and an idiot, basically, to let me get away. But I hear he's too much his father's son, so I wouldn't even be surprised by that shit. <laughs> yep. Either way, I win. And he says, and so do you. So stop fucking bitching and complaining and snapping at me. If you just keep your mouth shut and do what I tell you, we might even get there in time for your uncle's wedding, which was really a uh, terrible way to end that chapter because it reminded me of where we were going. It ends with time for your uncle's bloody wedding. Oh my God, that's right. Because I see what you did there, Georgie. Sometimes it's perfect and then sometimes it's too much. It's a real back and forth with me and George (laughs) Martin. We see it. Mm -hmm. We get it. Uh, 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 uh. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the chapter. Yeah. So yeah, they were short chapters, but both I thought were really good. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I was, High impact. Yeah, I was pleasantly surprised because I, you know, we've talked about this before. I'm always dreading like a brand chapter, even though, <laughs> even yeah. though they aren't as bad when you get into them, right? Mm-hmm. But something about it looming, <laughs> I'm just like, uh. <laughs> and I don't, and I feel, I feel guilty that I don't feel more guilty about it. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know what else to say about it, I don't it, you know guys. what to say about that. <laughs> like, like I feel like I should be like, oh, but Bran's not that bad. And he's not. And his chapters aren't that bad. They're not. But the fact is, every week, I'm like, God, I hope it's not a Bran chapter. <laughs> and so when I read these two, I was like, score. Because <laughs> yeah. I thought for sure it was going to be one. But then the excitement is is rife with potential pitfalls. Because the longer we go without one, the closer that means one is to becoming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is like, uh, <laughs> have, you, have you ever read The Chocolate Wars? Oh, my God. I read that when I was years ago in my 20s. I haven't read it since then, though. It's making me think because they have oh, that one wow. black marble and like everybody drawing a white marble. Yes. It's just like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. The Chocolate Wars. Yeah. I wonder if that's worth rereading. I don't want to go back to that. That's fucking depressing, that story. It is a hard story to read. Yeah. I think I might read it again. I like <laughs> I like stuff like that. You know, you know, you know how I get down, y'all. <laughs> I do. Y'all you know. know I like to lean into that shit. <laughs> I'm like, ugh, too depressing. I'm, I'm like, like yeah, maybe I'll go back and read it. That's a good point you just made about how depressing it is. <laughs> that is exactly how it went in my brain. <laughs> Owen, tw- Owen, Owen messaged me this fucking tweet the other day. Where is it? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, okay. you guys. It just, it just says, if BoJack Horseman is your comfort show, I need you to go ahead and call that therapist up and tell them what the hell is going on with you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, it is one of my comfort shows. Yep. And I still haven't watched it because I'm put off at the oh. trauma that I hear from it. Oh yeah, it's it's a you got to really be ready to like I said. Not everybody is built to lean in. Mm-hmm. I just fucking dive right head head first into that shit. I want to be completely submerged to where I can't see anything or hear anything, and I can <laughs> barely breathe. <laughs> Sounds. Great. It's like my version of a weighted blanket. You know the comfort that some people oh get? God. Yeah, it's like an emotional weighted blanket for me. <laughs> that is uh okay. See? You know what? I can see it. Right? I see? don't love it for me. <laughs> I'm not sure I like it for you either. <laughs> I'll say that. But I, I understand a little bit more what you mean. <laughs> Because, yeah, I'm one of those people that has, uh, I'm that neurodivergent that lays on the bed and then goes, will you just come lay on top of me just for a minute? Like, not sexually, just like, please press me into (laughs) the mattress until I can barely breathe and just stay there. And I'm getting crushed 
but Owen's the one going, this isn't, this is uncomfortable. Can I get up? No. <laughs> I'm not Stay done yet. for a minute. <laughs> I don't get why this helps. I don't know what it is. I yeah. haven't had, I haven't had really had the experience of it. I know a lot of people say they really like it. It's just, <laughs> it's almost like a massage. Like there's a feeling of, uh, uh, mm. and it pushes all the air out of you oh, and just sort right. of forces your body to like relax in a way that it can be hard to make yourself. Oh do you yeah, know what I, mean? I do. I do know what you mean. Yeah. It's a weird thing. That's really funny. I won't go into a lot of detail, but obviously people can just put, you know, put their little brains together. There's a certain <laughs> situations where you do experience that pressure of somebody being on top of you. Uh, and it never like, it, like it didn't really occur to me to separate it from, you know, a sexual act. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, I can hundred percent. I know exactly what you mean. That feeling of being kind of crushed and being like, this is not half bad. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I'm about. Um, all right, I'm gonna do new patrons next week. We missed uh, last week because Rashawn was sick. I but... was. Thank you guys for your patience and understanding to that. I appreciate it. Normally, I would do the patrons today, but I have puppies that I'm taking care of that need feeding, and I'm overdue. So uh, I'm gonna skip that and get to them, and I will be saying all of your delightful new names next week. I don't think I have that many new patrons this week anyway. I didn't see a lot of signups because most people were busy donating to the puppies, which I really appreciate. Everybody. <laughs> it has been so much money. Oh, my God. But uh, one of them is home today and he's asleep over here. He got up and peed in such a way that it has affected all four of the puppy pads I put down. <laughs> so now I have to change every fucking single one of them out. And I'm just like, how? He literally went to the seam. And was like, here, right here. This is perfect. <laughs> well, why, sir? What did I do to you? But he is okay. And I am just so happy about it. So mm -hmm. hopefully that's the first of some other good news. Fingers crossed. All right. Yeah, I believe so. <sighs> Turn it around. Turn around. <laughs> All right, everybody. We love you. And we'll see you next week. Until then, toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, guys. Joffrey, Cersei, Walter Frey, Meryn Chant, Tywin Lannister, Spoiled Network Podcast.